Hello, my name is Reverend Richard Owusu. Today I want to share with you a small dream that the Lord gave unto me in 2013. This is the first of many dreams that the Lord, through His grace and mercies, has given unto me. And I believe by sharing this dream with you, would encourage you and inspire you so you would have hope and faith in the Lord. Uh, let us go into this dream. In this dream, I was in New York, Manhattan, 59th Street, working in the basement of one of the tallest skyscrapers in Manhattan. I was there with a group of men working together in that basement when all of a sudden the building came crumbling. Everything fell on us. Everything collapsed on us. So I fell with my back flat on the on the floor and I started calling up the guys that I was working with but none of them responded so I thought to myself maybe they got a chance to exit the building before it went down so whilst I was there I overheard people screaming on the streets people shouting and screaming and a lady that I overheard her she called 911 and the police and ambulance and the rescue team, everybody came around. And I overheard the lady talk to them and she said that uh, she just left the building. And when she was coming out of the building, she saw a group of young men working in the basement and she believes that they are still over there working. And she was crying, pleading unto them for them to come and rescue us. And when the uh, when the uh, the rescue team got together, I heard them say that even if they get like ten excavators right now, it will take them a couple of days before they can get to uh, the basement and rescue whoever is there. So at that point. I I lost every hope. I just gave up. I was like, I'm dead. But I I wasn't hurt. I was just between two metals. And I could move my arm and myself just a little bit, but I couldn't sit down. I couldn't sit up. I couldn't do anything. And when I screamed, they didn't hear me. But when they talked, I heard them. So I started saying a little prayer and I saw from the sky this strong bright light that pierced through all these broken fragments of metal, uh, wooden and glass rock pieces. It pierced through all these uh, debris and I saw it but it was softer on my eyes and within that bright light in the middle of that bright light I saw a hand a very huge hand very huge mighty hand that lifted me up through the debris and that hand placed me behind the people who were gathered at the at the street placed me behind them so nobody saw me but i was right behind them and they were still talking about how they are they are going to uh, scoop all these debris and go in and rescue people from from the basement so i heard them and then i tried to see this huge man who rescued me so I lifted up my head to see his face and his head was in the clouds. He was so tall that I didn't see his face. His face, his head was in the clouds. But he, he talked to me and he said, I have rescued you. I have delivered you. Now I'm going back to your father. What do you want me to ask on your behalf? But then I thought, I thought he was talking about my earthly father, my biological father. But then my biological father 
had died um, a couple of years then. So I was thinking that maybe he's talking about my biological father. Then I realized that, no, he wasn't talking about my biological father because my biological father has no power to give me anything. So I realized that he was talking about my heavenly father. And then I was about to say that I need money to do, to do a lot of stuff. But the power of speech was taken away from me. I couldn't speak. I couldn't say anything. Then he told me, read John chapter 8. So right from that moment or from that day, every day for almost two months, every day, I read John chapter 8. I read it and the Lord gave me a very profound understanding of that chapter. And it's very, very interesting. The Holy Spirit ministered unto me while I was reading that John chapter 8. A very deep understanding of that chapter. So I, I, I think this is the right time to share this dream, this short dream with you. But let me encourage you. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2, 9, that God knows how to deliver the godly out of their temptation. It doesn't matter whatever your temptation is, whether, whether it is tribulations, afflictions, persecutions, disease, or sickness, the Lord is able to rescue you out of all your temptation. Only if you are a godly person. Because he says, godly. That is the key. The Lord knows how to rescue the godly out of all their temptations. I have heard a lot of testimonies regarding people who were involved in serious accidents and through the mercies and grace of our Lord, they were rescued. They came out unscratched. There are a whole lot of testimonies in this world. There are testimonies in the Bible. Read the book of Daniel. You hear how the Lord closed the mouth of the lion. Read that book. You will hear why or how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were rescued from the fire. The book of Jonah read it. You will see how God rescued Jonah from, from, from the stomach of the whale. The whale was in the deep sea. Jonah was in the whale's stomach. If you do or if you research on the anatomy of the stomach of the whale, you will see that it has several compartments and it's impossible for, for something to get into the stomach of the whale and come back up through the esophagus. It is impossible. And the whale has one of the strongest hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So it's impossible for you to live in the stomach of the whale for even an hour or a few minutes. But Jonah stayed there for three days, for three days, and the Lord delivered him. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 that the hand of the Lord is not short, that he cannot rescue us or deliver us. He continued to say that the ears of the Lord are not dull, that he cannot hear us. But why is he not hearing us? It's because of our iniquities and our sins that have separated us from our Lord. Brethren, my brother and my sister, the Lord loves his children. The Lord will never leave us or forsake us. Let us believe in him. Let us have hope in him. If we live for the Lord in our, in our time of tribulation, in our time of difficulty, he will never turn his back on us. He will rescue us. Let us believe in him. Let us have faith in him. He is our Lord our master, our king, our defender, our redeemer. He will never leave us or forsake us. 
God richly bless you for spending your time to listen to this dream. Let your hope be in the Lord and have faith in Him. Amen. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for this dream that you gave unto me, Lord. I pray that whoever listened to this dream or whoever listened to this message, if they are going through any difficult time, any sickness, any disease, any affliction, any tribulation, any persecution, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you deliver them, O God, not because of their righteousness, but because of your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for delivering your children in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.